Are you having a bit of a dilemma deciding whether to insource or outsource your content marketing? If so, this video is for you. I want to cover about a dozen points, a dozen things that you should consider when you're thinking about insourcing and outsourcing. Now, to cut to the chase, the conclusion is, is that it could be both. It could be that you could do both, and that's fine. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the things you, can, you should consider when thinking about insourcing or outsourcing your content marketing. And the reason that I want to talk about this is because we recently asked this question at one of our workshops. When should I insource? When should I outsource? Can I get someone else to do my content for me? What if I don't have the strengths, the education that I need? All these questions were coming up. And this is my response to that question. So insourcing versus outsourcing, which one should you do? The answer is maybe both okay now the, the biggest thing that people were considering especially business people people who are directors c-level in their company they've got their business hat on they're thinking to themselves well time money resource these are the three big things human resource in our business these are the three things that we've got to consider when we decide to do anything in our business so number one budget do you have the budget to outsource this is the, the probably the first thing you're going to think about well if we don't have the budget to outsource then we are going to have to find a way to do it in-house now, you might have a tight budget, there might be no budget at all, but you might want to consider not just outsourcing to just agencies, but thinking about freelancers, people who are very good at a specific thing, like a freelance writer, for example. That writer could, perhaps, you could use them on an ad hoc basis, so you could throw a little bit of budget at it, get some work done, and you're not committed to a longer term agreement, for example. That freelancer could just add to what it is that you're already doing. So for example, if you're already doing your own blog articles and your own content, then maybe the, the writer could bulk that up for you and add to it so you can do more with um, with with your budget and keep the, some of it in house as well. So you could do both that way. So budgets budgets one thing obviously you want to consider. But if you haven't got any cash, you've got any money, then you aren't going to be able to outsource. You're going to have to find a way to generate that content from within your team that you already have. So the second thing is human resource. You need to think about what strengths do your team members already have. Some of them might be great at writing. writing. Some of them might be really interested in video and photography. Some of them might be really interested in audio like podcasting and doing things like that their skills or knowledge have they got all of that if so then you should leverage them give them some time to create content for you and leverage your team it's one of the best ways to get out there in fact when it comes to outsourcing or thinking about outsourcing even though we're a content agency and we do content for other people our long-term strategy is really to integrate content marketing into the organization to get them to create the ideas and create the content themselves. That's the, that's the best place to be. And we can be more directing on strategy and ideas and development, which is the best place to be really. So really when it comes to it, insourcing or in, getting the content in-house is a great way to do it. Now, if you're looking at your human resources, your team, and perhaps they don't have the skills or the knowledge or the education or the understanding of content marketing, one of the low risk things that you can do is get them to go on to a workshop or something like that where they can get taught about and learn about content marketing. And that means that you can then bring that knowledge and that experience in-house, upskill your team, give them the tools and the resources that they need in order to do it. And that would probably be, as far as your budget's concerned, you're already paying your staff anyway. So how about find allocating some time for them to come together and discuss ideas and create content in-house. So there's the budget, there's the human resource, and then there's the element of time as well. So you do need to consider time is money, but in the main, time isn't cash, right? So you can use the team that you've already got to kind of leverage that. So like I said, one of the lowest ways to do that is to get them onto some sort of workshop. And the reason you want to educate your staff and to, even to embrace the culture from within the organization, you don't want to be the type of company that abdicates the marketing. So outsourcing marketing is completely fine. People do it, that's why marketing agencies exist. But you don't want to be thinking to yourself, well, I'm gonna give this to the marketing agency and I'm gonna forget about it. You still need to think to yourself, well, actually, why are we doing this? What is the culture within our organization? Content marketing really thrives on a content marketing culture where everybody understands exactly what's happening. So getting them onto workshops, educating your team, getting the buy-in, driving ideas, getting all of that done in-house is a fantastic pl place to be. That's the ultimate end game, I think, when it comes to content marketing is really bringing that culture in-house and using your outsource, outsourcing to uh, for expertise, basically, and strategy development, ideas, maybe specific set of skills for app development or website development or something like that but really the content the personable element the personality the voice 
you kind of want to leverage your team for that, especially when it comes to things like video and live broadcasting and even blog articles and audio and podcasts, all that kind of stuff. I think it's really good to get that in-house. So the culture is important, education is important, budget, time, human resource, those are the sort of the main things that I would want you to think about when you're thinking about insourcing versus outsourcing. And like I said, you can use so you can outsource as well as do it in-house. You can kind of marry the two together to kind of help you to get more done, to increase the volume and perhaps increase the quality of your content if you haven't got a set of skills within your business. But look at your team, look at the resource you already have. How can you make more of it? I hope that's been helpful for you. If you've got any questions about anything I've covered in today, please get in touch, chris at cmauk.co.uk or tweet me at chrismar101. It'd be interesting to hear about what's on your mind with regards to insourcing and outsourcing for content marketing. I hope you've had a great day and don't forget to be awesome.